Right, so out thrifting again and this time I'm trying some new locations in a few smaller towns where I've not been before to see if there are any interesting hidden camera treasures. Or it actually can be anything interesting, but I'm trying to be a bit careful when buying stuff because I already have too much useless stuff at home. But in any case, let's have a look at the first location. This flea market doesn't have that many rentable shells, it's mostly the source own stuff and well there's a lot. Mostly cups and pots and such, but there are some electronics also. And among all the stuff I finally found something which belongs to a camera, a flash. Not so interesting by itself, I already have a box of this, which I don't do anything with really. But if there's a flash there's usually some cameras somewhere around also. And well what do you know, here's a whole box of cameras, seems to be mostly pocket cameras. And first of all here is a 110 camera, I just got one so I don't really need one more. At least not before I have tested the one I have with film. This here is something more interesting and rare, a Kodak disc camera, I have not seen this one before. And well, well, what makes it unique is that it has its own film format, a disc. But unfortunately there is no film for it, which means this is a bit out of scope for me since I try to not buy cameras that I cannot use. Here we have something a bit more interesting, a Konica rangefinder. But even though it looks kinda okay, it's not in working condition, unfortunately. Would it be nice otherwise. I almost always find Instamatics or an Agfa equivalent, like this ISO Rapid, which uses Agfa's own film format and, well, there is a cartridge in this one, so it can probably be reloaded, but I don't know, I have too many pocket cameras to test already, so I don't know, I probably would not have time for it. Another common find is folders, and well, here's one, but it has definitely seen better days. On the inside it sort of looks okay, but it does not seem to be working unfortunately, and I don't know what brand it is, so I will leave it. Of course, well here's the Kodak Instamatic, there had to be one, <laughs> especially in a big pile of cameras like this. And well, this one is for 110 film, but there's also one for their own format. Not too far away from the cameras, I found some old cameras and flash manuals, which is actually kind of nice, because you rarely, if ever, get any manuals or packages when buying vintage cameras, so it's nice to see these also once in a while. Nothing I need, but still. In the rentable shelf section, there were no cameras in sight, and not so much else of interest either. The only thing that caught my interest was this biscuit tin, which looks like a radio. It also a little bit resembles a camera. Or sort of, maybe. <laughs> but uh, right by the exit there was a little bit more advanced camera, an electronic Pentax SLR, for an okay price also, but it is not what I'm looking for, so maybe if it had been a Nikon I would have gotten it, but I think it's a nice find nonetheless. Let's head to the next location and try to get inside before it starts raining too much. And here it is, let's see if we can find anything interesting inside. This one seems to have mostly rentable shelves, there are lots of clothes and Christmas stuff and such. Nothing on this floor, so let's head upstairs. And well, you probably guessed it, nothing here either. The third and last location for the day, also a place which I have not been to before. So well, let's hope there at least is something which at least resembles a camera. And I have some luck right at the beginning, a Samsung mirrorless camera. And well, not something again, not something I'm looking for, but I take this as a good sign. And it definitely was a good sign on the shelf right behind it, I found a nice vintage camera. The case looks good and the price is not bad either. And well inside this case there is a Belora Bella 66, definitely the cutest camera I found so far. And most importantly it is in a working condition. Maybe not the most advanced medium from a camera, but I will take it since there is also a film in it. Let's continue and see if there is anything more interesting here. Well, there's a lot of different stuff, that's for sure. And well, for example, there is this Nokia phone. Fortunately, I do not collect this, so I can just leave it here even though it probably has a good price. And among the shelves I found another vintage camera, a Yashica autofocus pocket camera. But for a ridiculous price, like 130 euros, what are they thinking they have here? I mean, I find these all the time for like 10 euros or so. and. I don't know, I wouldn't even get it for that price because I don't need one and a half pocket camera already, but yeah. Yeah, but it does have a film in it and it's behind it taped back, so I don't know. At the same spot there was a Hanemex Compact A, not bad, but not very interesting either. And since it was at the same shelf, you can probably imagine the price. However, this one does have the box and the instruction manual, so yeah, I was saying you don't find this very often, I mean... Almost never you find this, so yeah, at least one good thing. <laughs> and well, what do you know, here is an AF pocket camera for 1250, a much more realistic price. 
and this location does seem to have a lot of old Nokia phones. And well, once again, I have to say it's fortunate I don't collect these because there are so many here. And this 3110 actually has a good price, but of course, who knows if it works. A little bit hidden away, I found the last camera for the day, digital compact. Of course, you find these at almost all of the markets, so nothing rare here. But there is one very specific digital camera I'm looking for, so yeah, maybe one day I will find that one. And lastly, we have a Lenin in brass for 15 euros. Yeah, interesting, but not something I will get in any case. So from all these three places, only got one camera, the Belora Bella 66, but it was a nice find, so I'm quite satisfied about that. In any case, thanks for watching and see you in my next drifting video. Bye.